Welcome back to the Porsche 07 K project series. Let's get tearing into this engine. All right, so the first thing we need to do is get off all of this exhaust manifold side of things. And we're gonna have to get the subframe and engine mounts unbolted from the engine so we can get this thing on an engine stand and work on it a little easier so we can flip it over and stuff. So I'm gonna get after that. All right guys, so I got the whole exhaust side of this engine off and I got it mounted on the engine stand. And a couple of things I've noticed right off the bat is the top end of this block looks amazing. Everything looks just clean and in super good shape. So no worries there. This is the fitting in question that's given us all kinds of problems. You can see it's leaking just sitting here. It's all gooped up with RTV. If I had another shop attempt that to try to get rid of the leak. The problem is it can't be replaced without pulling the oil pan because it has to unthread from the top it's like a swivel fitting so we got to take the whole oil pan off to get to that and fix that my plan is to probably weld an elbow with a standard male an fitting so that we get rid of this fitting altogether and eliminate that problem and then the rear main seal which was one of my biggest concerns because i couldn't understand why it might be leaking but it does look I don't know if you can see that on camera. If you can see this gap right here, it does look like the wiper is folded over. So I must have screwed that up when I installed it. I thought I got it money, but I guess not. So easy fix, but I'm really glad that it's obviously screwed up because I was wondering why the hell this thing was actually leaking, but it does look like I screwed up the install there. So, so bad, but good news, I guess. So this whole timing cover and everything's gonna have to come off anyway, because it's all integrated with the oil pan and the oil pump is driven off the lower timing chain so basically all that stuff has to come apart anyway so that I can modify the oil pump and get a little more oil pressure in this engine I'm also using the iBed oil filter block and this is an improved racing oil cooler adapter that has a thermostat built into it but I think there's an issue with this block here and once we get it all apart I'll show you what I think that issue is Okay, so I got this oil filter block off of here. So this port here comes up from your oil pump and then it goes into the filter housing, goes through the filter and comes back into this port, which goes into your main galley of your engine. And then it's got a crossover in that block as well that goes to this port that feeds the cylinder head. And if we look at this oil filter block here, so this is kind of the reverse of that. This is from your oil pump, comes up into this port to feed your main oil galley. And then there's a crossover inside of here that goes to this port that goes up to feeding the cylinder head. Problem I see is this right here. This is an anti-backfeed valve that iBed puts in here to try to keep oil up in the cylinder head to make your cold starts better and things like that. So you don't have like a clattery valve train. Problem is, I think it's a bit of a restriction. When I measured this, I have my oil pressure sensor right here on the block. So this is the main oil pressure after the filter. And I would have about double the pressure here as I did in the cylinder head measured at this port here. So I'd have maybe 60, 65 PSI at the block and only about 25 to 30 PSI here at the cylinder head. So I think there was a restriction there from that anti-drain back valve. So I'm gonna take that out and shit can it because I don't think it's really necessary. So I'm getting rid of that. In my opinion, it's way more important to have good pressure at the cylinder head. We want really good pressure at those lifters, both to keep the valve train from being clattery at idle and to hopefully help eliminate any lifter compression at high RPMs so that we're still opening the valves all the way even at 8,500 or 9,000 RPMs. And we also need that VVT to function correctly. So I think it's more important to have that oil pressure at the cylinder head than have that drain back valve. So I'm hoping taking the restriction away from this port, along with increasing the overall oil pressure to the engine by modifying the oil pump will cure our VVT issue that we have going on here. All right, next step here is to get this timing cover off and then we're gonna get the engine flipped over so we can get the oil pan off. And I'll see if I can get to this without taking the lower timing cover off, but I doubt it. So we'll probably have to take that off too.
All right, so here is the oil pan and girdle assembly that I built for this thing. So next step on this is to get this lower oil pan off. There's a couple pieces here. So there's the lower oil pan, the girdle, and then there's this flange piece that bolts on to give the lower timing cover a, a place to drain back and the transmission to bolt up because this is just a through hole in here. And so this one's threaded. So it's a pretty involved part. Uh, it's also a huge pain in the butt to install. I haven't been typically selling these to other shops because it's such a pain to get this thing installed right and it's just i didn't really want to have to support that product out there in the world that could change in the future here but it's just pretty complicated to get that thing installed correctly so so let's get this oil pan off and i'll show you what's going on under there There's the oil pan off. And here is the girdle assembly. So this little oil pickup I fabricated looks a lot like the OEM. Doesn't look like there's any material in the screen. So that's a really good sign. So this girdle basically sandwiches the stock main caps. So we put longer, larger diameter studs in, and then it sandwiches the main caps. Then you can see the, how we get the rods in through these, these access holes here. There's a little dipstick poking out of its little hole. And then it bolts up all the way around this perimeter to the block. So it just basically rigidifies the whole block and makes the bottom end a lot stronger. Uh, previously, these engines were braking between 1,000 and 1,100 horsepower, and I've got a couple cars that are up over 1,400 horsepower or right around there running this girdle now. So um, so it's extended the horsepower on this engine at least 300 horsepower, and uh, it's working well. So I've got to get this oil pump out. I was hoping I could maybe just get the face of the pump off, but it's not looking like that's going to happen. So that means I have to take the girdle off because there's a bolt hiding under here that I have to get to for the oil, oil pump. And to get the oil pump out, basically all that has to come off. So I'm going to keep going here. So I went ahead and took this lower timing cover off. It was just going to be too much of a pain to try to get that girdle out of there with that still on. Uh, the good news is none of these sliders have any signs of any kind of wear, so they're looking really good. I've got everything apart except for these main bolts. So the nuts are still on those. However, before I break those loose, I want to loosen this rod, these two rod bolts because I want to check these rod bearings and cylinders two and three, those get the most air with our intake manifold setup. Uh, I know that because when we're logging the EGTs, those are the two leanest cylinders. So we balanced those out in the tune. We added a little bit of fuel, took away a little bit of timing in those two cylinders, but there's still the most likely to knock or detonate or ping and beat up those rod bearings. So, so I wanna check a rod bearing just to see what they're looking like. And that's gonna be the one I check. So I'm gonna loosen that one first. The reason I'm gonna loosen it now is so that the crank is still seated because these rod bolts are like uh, 105 foot pounds or 95 foot pounds, something like that. They're, they're pretty damn tight. So I'm gonna loosen those first and then I'll loosen the rest of these mains and pull this girdle off. Okay, so we got the girdle off, so let's check this rod bearing. Absolutely perfect. Yep, these are looking really, really nice. So no issues there. Just snug those up for now. I'll torque them once I get the girdle back on. Let's have a look at this number one main bearing. 
Again, just a little bit polished. This should theoretically be the one that gets the least amount of oil because it's all the way at the front of the block, farthest away from the oil pump and where it enters the galley, but that looks really good as well. So I'm not real worried about the bottom end of this engine at all. Okay, so I'm happy with those bearings. I don't think there's any problems with the bottom of the end of this engine. Next step is to get this oil pump off. We're gonna have to pull this tensioner here and then pull that oil pump off and get that modified for more oil pressure. So I got the oil pump all apart here. So I'm gonna go do my super sleuthy oil pressure upgrade to it. It looks really good. Barely any visible wear on the inside of the pump housing. Everything on this engine looks amazing. So I'd say that Vafa has a pretty solid engine. All right, so I got the oil pump all modified, so it's time to start getting this engine back together. So there's the oil pump back in place. Timing is set, timing tensioners back in place. I have the crank locked with this tool in the zero position. This engine's a little funny because where the timing is zero is actually top dead center cylinder number five. So it's a little confusing if you don't know that, but number five is at top dead center currently. And it also has the cam lock tool in place there. So how you set the timing on these is you basically lock everything in place, you get this lower chain on, and then you get this cam chain on, and then these two bolts here are just a friction interface. So you have all those lock tools in place, and, and then once you torque these bolts to spec, basically the timing is correct. It's pretty easy to set the timing on them if you have those tools. I have no idea how you would do it without them. So get the tools. So this is the girdle I designed. It functions to strengthen the bottom end of the block and it kind of functions also as a windage tray. The windows here are for assembly purposes so that you can get the rod caps on, but it's basically just a big burly hunk of aluminum. It probably weighs about eight pounds or so and you can see all the work that's gone into it. It's a pretty intricate piece and then this piece goes along with it, bolts up back here as part of the transmission interface and it also finishes sealing the surfaces there. So this has to go back on the engine. So it goes like that and then as you can see it sandwiches the stock main caps and then the studs go all the way through this whole plate and sandwich everything together to make it strong. And then this whole outside perimeter is also bolted down to the block. So it just makes everything more rigid. And then this ends up like that. So that's what it looks like when it's all bolted up. Uh, there's a lot that goes into it to getting everything to seal properly so it doesn't leak oil. And there's, there's kind of a order of operations to installing it, as well as all the machine work that it takes to actually make it work correctly. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a chore. I think I'm actually gonna stop this video here because I'm waiting on a couple parts to get this thing finished up. I'm not gonna bother sealing all of this and installing it yet because we also have the rear timing cover to put on and it all kind of has to be done at once so that everything seals up properly. So, so once I get those parts, I'll do another video on the install of this and then we're gonna modify the oil pan turbo drain and get that thing fixed and installed. Everything hung back on this engine and ready to go back in the car in the next video. So please ask questions, let me know your thoughts. I really appreciate all the comments and just generally all the support. Appreciate you guys. We'll see you in the next video.